So let's take a look at the Honda D-Series engine and just talk about some of the best mods and upgrades that you can get for it. So you've got yourself a car and it's got the D-Series engine. There are lots of parts available for most Honda engines out there, but with the D-Series, you've got to bear in mind that the engine was originally designed for economy. It wasn't built initially as a performance engine. So the Honda D-Series originally started off as a fairly small engine in the 1.2, 1.3 litre capacities and a 1.4. Then by increasing the bore and stroke, they were able to increase cylinder capacity and create the D15, the D16 and the D17, which is where things start to get really interesting. The D15 was used in the Honda CRX, the sporty model of the time. And this also had the VTEC mechanism installed on it. So even in the early days of Honda, they were really pioneering the performance engines. There was also a Japanese specific version of the D-series engine, which was labeled the ZC, which had quite a few revisions over and above the standard engine. But again, that was used predominantly in the more performance oriented Civics, the SIs, the CRXs, and it came with a VTEC option as well. And it's as they started to increase the capacity and adding VTEC that these engines start to get really interesting from a tuning point of view. So the D-Series engine came to fruition around about 1988. It was sold concurrently with the B-Series engine and it was generally aimed at the economy market. So you will generally find the D-Series engines more economical and producing slightly less power than the B-Series counterparts. The early engines had an interesting evolution from the original carb setup that they used. They had a single point fuel injection setup and these engines were identified as a PGM carb, just showing that the carb was effectively electronically controlled, an early form of fuel injection on those engines. Not all of the D-Series engines had VTEC and some came with a single overhead cam and some came with a double overhead cam. And the smaller engine sizes were generally fitted to the smaller cars like the Honda Jazz, the Honda Fit, whereas the 1.6, 1.7 litre engines were generally reserved for the more performance oriented versions versions and these would typically come with those nice extras like the double overhead cam and the VTEC mechanism. So the D-Series engines are supremely reliable, probably one of the most reliable engines that Honda have ever churned out. Issues are unlikely to happen. We've seen these reaching a quarter of a million miles with barely breaking a sweat or causing any problems whatsoever for the owner. So they really are great engines to have in your car. But we're going to look at the best mods and upgrades that you can do to your D-Series just to help Help you to spend your money wisely and I'm going to give you a realistic view on the sort of power gains that you can expect with many of the different popular mods that people do. But whatever engine you start with, that has a big bearing on your approach to tuning it and how you go about extracting the most power. So on most D-Series engines, if you don't have VTEC, then a camshaft upgrade is probably the single biggest thing that you can do. So it is actually possible. We've seen these D-16 engines, for example, push to around 500 horsepower, which is quite a significant power gain over and above what was originally there at the factory. But the only way of achieving those high power gains really is to add forced induction. So we're just going to talk about some of the, the common popular mods that people do to the D-Series. So the first mod most people talk about doing is an induction kit. So the theory behind an induction kit is that it allows more air into the engine. Now with a D16 engine, if you've not done any other mods, the standard factory airbox and filter can flow more than enough. So the only reason you would want to add an induction kit is for the induction raw that you get. It really won't make any significant power gains that you're particularly notice on the stock D-Series engine. If you've raised the power significantly and we're talking about a 30-40% power hike, then you start reaching the realms of having a restriction in the intake and then it's time to look at uprating the induction, changing the filters. But for most projects, just dropping in a panel filter that flows better than the stock factory paper one is really the best option that you can go for. In fact, I usually use a cotton gauze K&N filter in most of my project cars and and it gives a really good balance between decent filtration and not restricting the airflow. So performance exhausts are probably the next most popular mod that people talk about on the D-Series engine. 
But again, like the intake, the stock factory setup flows more than enough. You're not gonna see a power gain. You may gain a peak power of about two or three brake horsepower, but overall, it's not gonna make very much difference to the performance of your car. But if you get the right silencer and cap back exhaust system, it can really enhance the exhaust note of the setup on the factory system, which a lot of people say is overly muffled and a little bit too quiet. So if you just want the engine to sound a little better and a little more sporty, then by all means, go out and get one of the many aftermarket exhausts that are available for your D-series engine. So remapping the D-series, like Hondata is probably the most popular plug-in module that people use to give access to some of the parameters in the engine. And if you've got a D-series engine with the VTEC, now that was quite an, a rare setup. Primary aim of tuning that is to get the VTEC zone to kick in at a lower point in the RPM range, effectively giving you a more sporty cam profile to enjoy. A Hondata will also allow you to just fine tune other settings in the engine, allowing you to ring out every drop of performance that you can. So with the big power gains, you're really looking at getting a turbo kit. Manufacturers of turbo kits have looked at all of the components you need to make them work on the D-series engine. And compression ratio ranged on the D-series engine from about 9.1 to 1 to about 12 to 1. So on those higher compression ratio engines, it becomes more tricky to fit forced induction. It's not impossible, but the lower compression engines really lend themselves nicely to adding forced induction. But you'll also need to think about uprating the fuel but if you get a decent kit, it should come with all of the components that you need to make it work properly, including those fuel upgrades and some means of altering the ECU's timing and the way it handles the new amount of airflow that's coming into the engine. So getting the power down to the road is another consideration. So the transmission affects the ratio of the gearing. So looking at different transmissions from the Honda range, you can often find more favorable gear ratios. Now, if you've tuned the engine, you've effectively moved the power Band. So it certainly makes sense to adjust the gear ratios just to fully exploit that new power band wherever you've decided in the RPM range to have your peak power and it can make swifter progress. But also fitting a, a differential will certainly help you in cornering, particularly in wet conditions. I note that a lot of the Type R models have got completely redesigned hubs and redesigned differentials just to make sure that they can get the power down. So a lot of head swaps and swaps within the different engines are certainly done quite regularly on the series engine. It's nice that Honda have used a fairly standard design across the different engine sizes. So there are a few little exceptions to that. So check our site for a bit more in-depth information and the different swaps that are available. But certainly getting components that are able to handle more power will strengthen your engine and just enable you to take your project to the next level. Realistically though, I do have to say that most D-series engines were built for economy and they don't make great project engines to work with. You can certainly spend money on them and make them more fun or make them sound better. But for the really big performance gains, unless you've got the D16 or the D17 blocks, you really would be spending an awful lot of money just trying to get a power gain on those. So if, if that's your situation, it may well be worth looking at an engine swap to a D16 or D17 block or even some of the B-series engines, they will often just drop pretty much straight in with a minimal amount of fuss and hassle. And that'll give you access to a lot more components and a lot more upgrades. So you'll get a bigger bang for your buck that you're spending on your tuning project. I know a lot of people are talking about doing swaps on their Hondas. So with so many different engines to choose from, it can be quite a dizzy and array of choices and there are a few pitfalls. So we're gonna do a video as well, highlighting these problems and pitfalls just to help you make sensible decisions when it comes to tuning your D-series engine and getting the most power from it. Thank you for watching. Nice to have you along. Don't forget to stay tuned. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. If you could boot that like button as well, it would really help us to get out there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.